Okay, so hello fellow kaiju fans and kaiju collectors, I'm back from my next Godzilla uh, figure thing review. Um, now you're wondering why you're seeing the 1984 figure, that is because I forgot to review this guy the last time. Um, given his flaws, and his few flaws, and the pros of the figure, I'm going to give this guy an 8.5 out of 10. He's very good, but I feel that like he could be better. Um, but he's not terrible. It's not like I'm, or he's not like some of the other Godzilla fans have been making out, uh, making him out to be. Um, so yeah, so um, I hope you guys liked that review. Um, sorry about that. I forgot to review it. Now we're on to the official focus of this. Yeah, I'm panning the camera down because we're working on something smaller today. Um, so today what we're going to be taking a look at is, as I promised in my last video, is something relating to the 1974 uh, Godzilla. And you can probably tell by um, the music that I've put into this from the Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla and Terror of Mechagodzilla soundtrack because I couldn't get the Godzilla vs. Megalon score. We are looking at my Yuji Sakai diorama of Godzilla 1973. Now I'm going to have to uh, probably put this into like some sort of lighting. I'm probably going to have to brighten the camera just to try and get it to fully look at him. Um, yes, now this is the 1973 suit. I consider it the 1974 suit because I like this sculpt for the 74 suit better than the one that we got from the actual Yuji Sakai diorama, which had the two, um, things stuck to it. The two towers. Um, now I no longer have this box to this figure. Um, it was part of the final works, the final wave, I believe. Um, I would still like to try and get a few more of these. I really like these uh, these dioramas. These are really nice little, I guess you'd say gas upon dioramas. Um, so, yeah. Um, but it, I did manage to save, however, the little pamphlet that came with it. The pamphlet that was made to showcase the other figures in the final wave. So, yeah, we do get the um, final thing. And then, of the ones on here, the ones I'd really like to get are the 1954 figure, of course. Um, and then we got the 1966, the 1969, 73, of course, which I got. This is like the most sought after one for me, the 91, because of that King Ghidorah, uh, that Tokyo Tower little figurine thing. Um, I really want to get that. And then we got the 93, of course, wouldn't mind getting that. And then we've got 2002. Oh, I really want 2002. But yeah, so that's the little thing. And then we got all this in Japanese about the uh, figure itself. And on the back, we get a little shot from the film, and I believe this is just talking about the film itself. I will hold on to this, though, because maybe one day I will learn how to read and write Japanese and speak it, and I can read this so I can figure out what it says. And if I do, I will tell you what it, uh, what it says in a completely off-topic video. Um, but yeah, so with this figure, this is a very, very nice figure for what it is. Um, for being a little 3.7, uh, no, not even a 3.75 inch figure, um, for being a little, maybe like 2 inch figure, it's a very good figure. Now, he does pop off of his stand. Um, let's have a look at the stand before we have a look at the Godzilla figure. Um, now this does have a nice little, uh, sculpt of a hillside. Hang on, let me lay this pamphlet down before it blows away. Um, we do have the little pegs for Godzilla's feet. Um, let me put this up in the light, yeah. Then we get a nice part where his tail's supposed to rest. Oh, sorry, though. Why are you seeing that? Uh, these reviews are full of mistakes, but I don't really care. They're reviews. Um, then the Megalon title. Um, you could pretty much use this if you wanted to use it with any of your um, monsters that would fit this diorama. Like, if you want to do something with a little mini Gyra or Sonda, um, you could probably do that. Now, of course, you're going to have the feet in the way, but if you wanted to, you probably could. For a while, I put Gamera on here for some reason. That was when I had my thing for Gamera. Still can't stand Gamera anymore, though. Um, just, But that's just me personally. I'm not saying I fully hate him. I just can't really get into it. Um, but yeah, so that's the detailing on there. Hang on. Let me just try and focus this in. Just so you guys can see the massive amount of detail Yuji Sakai puts in. Yeah, these things are really nice compared to some of the other things we've gotten recently. And these are not expensive like the X-Plus figures. 
But yeah, so I think these were made to like fit together or something. I can't remember. Um, yeah, this is a really long review. Now, onto the Godzilla figure. Um, now this is the 1973 suit, as you can see, because of the eyes and everything. Um, hang on, let me see if I can brighten this so you can see him. Yeah, there we go. Dang. It won't seem to focus. It's not focusing. Is this not focusing? Come on, damn it, focus. There we go. So, yeah, we do get some nice sculpting on here. Very, very nice sculpting. I wish the uh, spines would have had a little bit more paint, but what can you do? Um, now, this did come pre-assembled. I don't know if that's something that they put in later on, but I really like the sculpting on this figure. Really, 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 really like it. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, oh, sorry, you have seen the uh, 1984 Godzilla. I should probably just move him out of frame completely. Um, now, um, if you wanted to, just as a little bit of a size comparison between the two, um, I do have my gas upon Godzilla 1954. Now, this will hopefully show up on camera just right. Yeah, so he is shorter than the 1973 Godzilla. I'd probably put this guy at about two inches. It's probably his total size. Um, I don't really know the size of the actual figure. It was something I got when I was like seven years old. I was thrilled because I had some little Godzilla figures. So I was happy. Um, but Yuji Sakai really put a lot of work into this figure. I really like the uh, design of this figure. Um, props to him for being able to sculpt such beautiful little works of art like this. Um, so, yeah. Ah, so, price. These are, well, out of production, unfortunately. Um, I wish I could have gotten the other ones. The most sought after one, of course, for me is that 1991. God damn it, why can't I find it? <laughs> maybe if I go to G Fest one year, maybe I'll find it. Although it's probably going to be like 20 or $30. Maybe it'll pop up on eBay or Amazon. I don't know. But I do have plans to get some of the 1964, 1962. I might pick up the 74, the 75. I'm going to pick up a lot of these dioramas in the near future because I really like these things lately. Um, I've been taking a liking towards them because of how much detail is put into them. And, uh, oh my god, it's all dusty. Um, but because of how much detail is put into them and how much effort Yuji Sakai put into the sculpt of this figure and also the price. The price is a lot better than his... Uh, whatchamacallit, his X-Plus figures, which are like $300 and way, 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 way out of my price range. These, on the other hand, are essentially scaled-down versions of the X-Plus within my price range. So, yeah, so I um, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I guess I will see you guys for my next review. So, bye.